We've defined the notion of intensity before in this class, and we said back then that intensity represents the power transferred per unit area. In other words, I is equal to P divided by A and is expressed in Watt per meter squared. Now we also said that this is a general quantity. In other words, it's not specific to EM waves. It's specific to the fact that as long as you have a certain amount of power transferred per unit area, you can define an intensity. Now what does that look like in the case of EM waves? Well, let's assume we have a window here, and that the window has an area of one meter squared, just to keep things simple. And we have EM waves coming onto the window, maybe sunlight. Well, the intensity is going to tell you how much energy flows through the window every second, and that's going to be per meter squared because your window has a surface area of one meter squared. So that is what intensity represents, and what we have to do is define it specifically for EM waves. And we're going to do that by introducing a vector that's a very clever vector called the pointing vector. And this is going to be a clever vector just like dA was a very clever vector in the case of flux because dA had two pieces of information built into it. It was perpendicular to the surface, but it also had a magnitude equal to the infinitesimal surface area. And we said that that's the smallest surface area you can imagine through which one field line can flow. Well, the pointing vector is going to have two important quantities built into it. First is the direction of propagation, and then second, its magnitude, is going to be the intensity. And we typically denote the pointing vector by S. And to make sure that it points in the direction of propagation, it is going to be equal, at least in part, to E cross B, because we know that an EM wave propagates in the direction of E cross B. And to make sure that its magnitude is equal to the intensity, we're going to write 1 over mu naught E cross B. And then we have a vector that has a magnitude S, which is 1 over mu naught E B, and then sine of 90 because E and B are perpendicular to each other. So we don't have to worry about that. It's just going to be E B over mu naught. And so that is an extremely clever vector because it points in the direction of propagation, and that's the direction in which the sunlight propagates as it's going through your window, and it has a magnitude equal to the intensity. So we achieve two things with one single vector. There's only one problem, which is that E and B oscillate all the time in the case of an EM wave. And so S is the instantaneous intensity. But that's kind of not a very useful quantity. Well, we'd like to know, on average, how much energy comes through the window every second from the sunlight. And so S in and of itself is actually the instantaneous intensity, but we can average this quantity. And the average intensity associated with an EM wave is going to be equal to E0, B0, those are the amplitudes, divided by 2, mu0. And so, it's not directly clear how we got from S to S average, although we could potentially go over the math. The point is that if we do what we might call proper averaging, we will get the average intensity, which is E0, B0, divided by 2 mu0. And that's typically the quantity that we're interested in, because we'd rather know, on average, how much energy comes through the window every second. Knowing at a given moment how much energy is hitting the window might be interesting in some cases, but more likely than not, we're interested in the average. So having said that, let's just make a note, because we define as average as being E0, B0 over 2 mu0. And then you see all these different formulas for the average intensity, and you don't know where they come from. And they simply come from the fact that E is always equal to Cb, 
Therefore, in particular, E0 is CB0. And C squared is equal to 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. And the result of having these two formulas means that you can get different variations of S average. For instance, you might not want to express S average in terms of E0 and B0, because maybe you only know E0 or you only know B0. So what you could do is the following. You could say that S average by definition is E0, B0 over 2 mu naught. But you could then say that B0 is E0 over C, so that would be E0 squared over 2 mu naught C. And this is equivalent to 1 over mu naught C is equal to C epsilon naught. And so this is going to be 1 half C epsilon naught E0 squared. That is one version of the average intensity that is only a function of E0, the magnitude of the electric field. Of course, you can do the same thing with B0, because you can define S average and then express it solely in terms of B0. So it's E0, B0 over 2 mu 0, that's the definition. But then recall that E0 is C, B0, so you get C, B0 squared divided by 2 mu 0, and that's going to be equal to 1 half C cubed epsilon naught B0 squared. So worth pointing out that, yes, there is a formal definition of the average intensity, which is E0, B0 over 2 mu 0, but typically you can express it either solely in terms of E0 or solely in terms of B0, as long as you know these two formulas. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.